Hello everyone, I'm Brad Tallis from Autodesk. I want to welcome you to another Fusion 360 Tech Thursday. We're going to be continuing this multi-part series where we're going to be learning how um, to model a multi-part assembly. And in this case, it's one of these Christmas laser projectors. Um, today we're going to learn about doing the front and the back piece. And then next week we'll focus on the middle. Um, before I get started, uh, I have Angelo as my wingman today. Um, he's helping me out, so uh, be nice to him, otherwise he won't help me out anymore. So, thanks Angelo. Um, and I'm actually going to start out by, um, I was looking at some of the comments uh, in the previous uh, live stream that we did, and um, Mike B made a really good point, and I wanted to share his observation with you. He was going through and modeling the stake, and then when it came to the point where we added all of the fillets to all of the edges, he was having a problem that arose. And unfortunately, this is my fault. Um, I have some settings set up, and unfortunately, I didn't share that with all of you. So thank you, Mike B, for bringing this to my attention. Let me show you what happened. So he came in here to do the fillet, um, drew the box around the whole, you know, assembly or whatever, the whole part. Um, and then set the size to be 0 0.01. But I'm not going to do it right now, but it's going to fail. In fact, you see, it couldn't be created. Now, why is that? You know, I when I did it in my demo, it worked perfectly, right? And, you know, somebody else goes to do it, and unfortunately, it doesn't work perfectly. So here's here's the reason why. If I rotate to the back side you'll notice that it didn't select all of the edges. <clears throat> and Fusion is trying to create all of these fillets that join together and all that kind of stuff, but why did it not select those in the back? And the reason for that is in the Select menu, under Selection Filters, there's an option called Select Through. And I personally have this turned on all the time. What that means is it'll select all of the edges, even if they're hidden or behind. So for example, let me do that again. I'll draw a box around this. I'll type in the uh, 0 0.01. And if I rotate, you'll see, in fact, the preview updated. It actually selected through my design, through my model, and grabbed all of those edges. So um, Mike. Uh, you get a gold star for the day. Thanks for bringing that to my attention. Um, it's little things like this where I've, I've been using it for so long that I'm just used to it working that way. Um, I'll also give a shout out to Steve Sneed. He posted a picture of the project that he did uh, out on the Fusion 360 Facebook group. I love seeing those things. So if you're proud of what you're doing, post it out there. I, I love to see uh, all of you getting something out of these live streams. So, okay, um, I'm gonna jump back to my camera here real quick. This, this part is actually fairly complex and I've uploaded, it's in the description of the video, I've created a link with all of the um, decals that we're gonna be using, all of the imported models, and I even included my outline. Um, I actually do create an outline. And I put this in there now, it's kind of worded more for me, so you'll have to think like I do. But feel free to download that outline also and step through it, you know, watch the video, and then maybe go through the outline. And I talk about, you know, offset this face, you know, create these dimensions, etc. So all of that information is in the description of this video. Okay, let's dive right in. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do um, is we're, we're creating the case, you know, this whole thing right here. And um, again, the way I'm creating it, I'm not saying this is the perfect way or the exact way you should do it. I'm going to be showing some tips and tricks with this. And what we're going to do is we're going to create the main body, almost like a skeleton, and then break that down into smaller pieces. So I'm going to start out, the very first thing I'm going to do is create a new component. And I'm going to call it case. I think would be a good good word for this because it's kind of like the case. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and save my design. And I'll just call this new case or something. So it's being saved. 
and you'll see that that will go from untitled to new case. Okay, then we'll create a sketch that kind of defines the overall shape of the body. And to do that, I'm gonna create a fit point spline, but I wanna use some exact measurements. So I'm just gonna quickly kind of mock things up. I'm just gonna draw a couple quick lines, um, purposely making them a little bit different sized and not lined up. Again, you'll see why here in a second. I'll do something like that. Okay, and what we're gonna basically do is create a spline that connects these three points. But obviously I wanna dimension this. I want these lines to be the correct height and length. So I'm going to say I want um, those lines to be horizontal, or those points I should say, to be on the same plane like so, okay? And then I can create my fit point spline. So I'm gonna click one point, another point, and then the third point. Now when you're creating a fit point spline, you need to make sure that when you're done, you hit this little green checkbox, okay? And notice these green handles. These are your tangency and weight handles. So you'll notice that it's trying to follow the spline, and so it's a little bit more horizontal right here as it goes through that point and then it angles down through that point there. Okay, now I can come in and start to dimension these. So I want this guy to be 1.75, and you'll notice that you know some of the stuff will update as I'm going through here, but watch what happens to the spline as I'm updating. So I'm gonna say 2.25 for that one, and then um, 1.5 for this guy here. And you can see how, sure enough, that spline updated. And then finally, I'll add um, some locations, some dimensions where these are supposed to be uh, 2.5. And then one right here um, of 6.75. And now you'll notice that everything has um, went from blue to black, meaning it's fully constrained. Now, I'm going to jump to the drawing really quick. Um, this is also included in the description. And so basically what I did right here is this is exactly what I just created. So you'll see here's my first line, here's my second line, here's my third line, there's the fit point spline, and everything's dimensioned. So these are the dimensions that I'm using to create what I just made, okay? Um, in fact, you'll notice that these drawings aren't fully detailed. They're, they're dimensioned just enough to get you to be able to create the parts using the outline um, that I've created for you. So, you know, this one obviously has a lot more dimensions in it. But what's neat about this is Fusion actually kind of solves the problem for us as we're going through. It kind of fills in the blanks. So you might say, well, that's not fully dimensioned. Well, it doesn't really need to be in this particular case. Okay, so now I'm going to um, just add, oops, let me add some more geometry here. I'm just going to Maybe draw a line over and down a little bit, um, like so, and across. So I get a, you know, a finished profile. Well, you'll notice these lines are blue, so I need to finish constraining those. So let me throw a dimension of 0.45 and a dimension here of 0.5. So this is the basic shape of the the main body, okay? I'll go ahead and select those two profiles and I'm gonna revolve around. Um, I could have done a loft with multiple profiles, but in this case, I find it quicker just to create a nice curve and then we're gonna revolve that around. So I'm gonna say create, revolve. Uh, it already has the profile because I pre-selected the profile. What's the axis? So I'm going to click on that line there and you can see that it's taking that profile and revolving it around that main axis. I'll say OK and you'll notice I'm in this case component. I'm going to go ahead and expand this open. I like to open up my bodies and my sketches uh, folder or pull downs and for whatever reason okay there we go um, and that way I can get to them easily so I can turn things on and off okay according to the drawing this front edge is chamfered 
So I'm going to go ahead and do the chamfer command of 0.35. Now again, and I've mentioned this in my previous live streams, I could have created that chamfer in my sketch, in my profile, and then revolve that around. But I like to let Fusion do the hard work. Why do extra work in the sketches when I can just use the chamfer command and I can come back and edit that chamfer command much easier in the timeline than trying to find the sketch that was used to create that angled face. So again, you'll see me keep my sketches simple and I'll use commands like fillet and chamfer on the 3D model. Um, I'm going to go ahead and since I'm kind of working on this area right here, I'm going to go ahead and create some fillets. In this case, they're point, um, 0 0.05 according to the drawing on those two edges there. So you can kind of see how we rounded those off a little bit. And again, I'm just grabbing all of this information off of the drawing. I'm not going to keep going back and forth to the, to the drawing unless it's necessary. Okay, um, which I'm going to go back to the drawing right now. Now I want to create this curved section you see in the back right here. Okay, and so let's do that. I'm going to create a new sketch. Now I get this question every so often. Should I go back and edit the original sketch or should I create a new sketch? And this honestly is up to you. If I were to go back and edit this sketch, I wouldn't really see what the 3D model looks like because I'm going back in time before any revolve, extrude, or cuts, or anything like that has happened. However, if I create a new sketch, I'm going to say create a sketch on this front plane, you'll notice I see my 3D model. And so again, it's really up to you on what you want to do. If you want to see the 3D model, create a new sketch. If you're okay going back in time and working with something that's even before it was created, that's totally fine also. There's really no right or wrong answer here. I'll go ahead and I'm just going to create a kind of like a center line that kind of cuts through the center here. And I'm going to turn that to construction. So I select it, I say construction, and now you can see it's a dashed line. It's not an actual object line. I also want to project some information. Now here's another tip. I can select specified entities or the whole body and the whole body kind of does like a silhouette. So watch what happens. You know, it's not letting me pick edges or anything like that. I'm just going to click on the whole body. I'll say, okay. And you'll notice that it projected the whole body. Okay. Let me undo that. I'm going to do the project again, but this time I'm going to say, specific entities and I'm going to click on the same thing. I'll say OK and I'll turn off the body and notice I have a slight difference result. It's not a closed profile and specified entities is looking more for like edges and because that was a revolve there's really only one edge on that revolve and so you can kind of see it didn't create this one down here. So if you ever do a project and it doesn't seem to project everything that you want, do the um, project body instead. Okay, so another tip. Hopefully you guys find that useful. Okay, what I'm going to do now is just kind of mock up my curve. Um, actually, you know what? I lied. Before I'm going to do that, I want to create an offset of this line down about half an inch, um, half an inch, not five inches, minus 0.5. So I have my center line and then I just created a line that's half an inch below that. And I'm going to use that when I create my three point spline right here. And I'm going to go ahead and snap to this edge. And you'll notice when I get near that edge, it turns from a plus to a cross, like a little X. And that means it's going to create um, a coincident constraint automatically on that edge. I'll say OK. And there's my three point spline. Again, I'm going to kind of constrain it by adding some dimensions. So I want this point to be from here 
I want that to be over um, 5.25. And so you can kind of see how that updated my spline a little bit. And then I want this distance, let's make that a little bit larger. Let's make that like 5.5. And you can see because that point was coincident with that spline, even though I moved it over, it's actually following or staying coincident with that spline. Kind of a neat little tip there. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish my sketch. Now, the reason I did that, we're gonna use that um, profile, basically, that, that spline, to split this body. So I'm gonna come under Modify, Split Body. What's the body to split? And then what's the splitting tool? And I can actually click on that spline, and it's kind of hard to see here, but it's basically taking that shape and it's going to use it to cut away. So when I say OK, watch what happens to my bodies over here. When I say OK, I now have two separate bodies. Now we don't need this little piece that we're, we're getting rid of, so I'm going to right click on body two and say remove. Now you'll notice in there there's also delete. Please don't use delete. Um, I use remove 99.9% .9 of the time. Uh, delete, if anything was referenced from it and stuff like that, it would kind of mess up your timeline. Um, so remove basically says, okay, I, I created the body. I'm going to actually remove it. And you'll notice it even created something in the timeline. Um, so I can always come back and re-add it in there if I want to. If I were to suppress that, that body would come back. Okay. But it's basically removing it out of our design. I think that's the fastest and simplest way. Okay, so we got kind of the basic shape. I'm going to add a little bit more detail to it. I know there's a fillet on the front and the back edge. Um, I think they're about 0.1 according to the drawing. So you can kind of see it creates a nice fillet on that back edge. And I'll do the same thing on this front edge create that point one fillet say okay and if I were to um, create a section analysis let me go ahead and create a section analysis through the part you'll notice that it's a solid body okay it's one big chunk of material well, I want to hollow this out so I'm going to use the shell command Okay. It's asking for a face to look into. Well, this is actually open in the design. Right now it's closed. So I'm going to click on that face and then I'm going to start to drag. Now it's kind of hard to see, but if I rotate, we're now looking inside the part. We're shelling it out. In fact, it's supposed to be 0.1. Okay. Now let me turn that analysis back on again, and sure enough, you can see that we've shelled the part out, and it has an equal wall thickness of 0.1. So I really like using that analysis. It really kind of shows what's going on. So again, using the shell command, we opened up, we looked into this face right here, and then we hollowed it out to be 0.1 inches. Okay. Moving on. Now, what I want to do is now I'm going to split this into three bodies. And this is that example I gave earlier where I need to create a sketch. Well, I could come back to this sketch here because this actually has enough information that shows the whole body. So I am going to this time go back in time and edit that sketch. And I'm just going to draw a rectangle like so. I don't care what size. Right now, I'm just going to mock it up. Then I'm going to come in and add some dimensions. So this is supposed to be 1.3 wide. And it's supposed to be 2 inches from the front edge. Okay, so you can kind of see how it's now moved it in the correct location. Now you'll notice that the width of it is constrained, but the height of it isn't. In this case, it really doesn't matter. I know some people like to have their sketches fully constrained and I could absolutely you know add a dimension in here and say make that you know five and a half if I wanted to 
but you know, and constrain you know constrain its other things. But in this case, it's basically being used to just split the body. What matters is the width. So I'm going to go ahead and say finish. Now my sketch went away, and this is the exact reason why I like to unfold my bodies folder and my sketches folder because I can very quickly come in here and toggle these on or off. So all I have to do is turn that sketch to, which was right here, turn it back on. Okay, modify split body, kind of like what we did with the back of the part. What's the body to split? That's the body. What's the splitting tools? I'm gonna to click on this rectangle. You'll notice it selects the whole thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. Watch what happens to my bodies over here when I say OK. I now have three separate bodies. And to keep things clear, I'm going to rename these. So I'm going to change this one to front. I'm going to rename this one to back. And I'm going to rename this one to mid. Please, please, please name your bodies, name your parts so it's easy to find, okay? If I want to find the mid one, there it is, right? It's labeled mid, okay? Okay, so here's where I think it's going to get kind of cool. So we started with a basic shape. We started with that curve. We revolved it. We've added a little bit of detail to it, kind of the main design. And then we've sectioned it into three separate parts, or we've split it into three separate parts. Now we're going to work on each of those individually. So you can kind of think of the case as the top level. And now we're going to work on um, the children of it. So basically like the front and the back, etc. So to do this, what I'm going to do is we're going to work on the front to start out with. I'm going to right mouse click on it and say create components from bodies. And you'll notice that it took it out of there and it created a component. It called it front and it's its own individual component now. But what's cool is it's still kind of linked to this case. So if I were to go back and edit the case, you know, like change the, the shape of the spline, for example, it would affect the front also. So this is what some people call top down design. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and turn off these other bodies. I don't need to look at them right now. So here is our shelled out front component. Okay, now the first thing I need to do is I need to change the thickness of the wall um, in, in the actual design, in the actual part. It was a little bit thinner than the rest of it. So I'm just going to click on this inside face and say press pull or I could come under modify and say offset. So if you're looking for the command, it's actually called offset. And if I grab this, you can see I can drag that and make it thinner. So you can kind of see how I'm changing the thickness there. And in this case, I need to go minus 0.02. I'll say okay. And here's the other thing I like about working with components. Here's the timeline for everything that I'm doing with this particular component from the time we created it as a component We did an offset. Okay, then we're gonna do a sketch. We're gonna do fillets. We're gonna do stuff like that Okay I'm going to zoom up here. Um, let me show you Where's the front part? Um, here we go. Just a second. I apologize. Uh, let me ch change to the camera really quick. So we're going to be creating these little uh, um, screw hole things you see inside those little screw bosses. That's what we're going to be creating right now. So um, I'm going to create a sketch on this inside flat face. So I'm going to say create sketch. Okay. And I want to put one of those bosses in the middle between these two edges right here that you see okay well there's no like center point or anything like that so I have to create that automatically so I'm gonna project so I'm gonna hit P for project 
And this time, I don't want to uh, project the whole body. I'm going to just do the specified entity. So I'm going to click on this face. And it projected that face. And I'm also going to project that line, because that line might actually help me. So if I were to expand this open, let's, let's unfold these guys a little bit. Okay. And I turn off that body. And it's a little bit hard to see, but you can kind of see it projected these lines right here. Okay. Then I can come in, let me zoom up here, and create a construction line. So I'm going to say line, construct, I'm just going to go from one point to the other point. And you'll see that it's snapped, and it's black, which means it's fully constrained. And what's nice is now if I create a circle, I want to make sure I turn off construction. If I get near the center of this line, you'll see it'll snap automatically. You see that little triangle? That means it's going to snap right to the midpoint. And then I can type in my circular sizes here. So 0.1 and click in that same spot and say 0.2. And I now have that profile. Okay. Then I need to extrude this. Now you'll notice that it's kind of hard to pick all of these, right? So I'm going to go ahead and click and hold, and it lets me grab these profiles. So I'm just going to click and hold because some of these profiles are behind a 3D body. So I'm going to grab all of those and say extrude. Now some of these tips I've shown before, like clicking through to grab other geometry, etc. So if I'm going a little fast on those, it's because I've shown them before. Hopefully you know of those tips. I'll specify my distance of 0.675 according to the drawing. But you'll notice that it's red. Well, that's because it's actually cutting away. Well, we want to join that together. Now I also want to add some draft to this, and I've mentioned this in my last live stream. I could do that right here, but I don't like to, because not only would it taper the outside, it would also taper the inside. And if I ever wanted to come back and change that taper angle, I'd have to know that I did it in the extrude. So I'm going to use the draft command instead. So let's go ahead. We typed in our distance. We told it to join. We'll say OK. And you can see that we created that nice looking standoff. Okay. And then, like I mentioned, I'm going to come in and use the draft command. So I'll say draft. What's the plane? So it's asking for a plane. What do you want to basically hinge around? So we're going to hinge around this plane here. And then it's asking for a face. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that face. And if I kind of extend this you can kind of see what's happening here it's basically hinging around that plane so that's what that is asking for and we only need to do like one degree of draft in this case and there we go we've added some draft to that in fact if I were to look straight at it you can now see see that draft right there okay Obviously, in fact, I looked at the chat and somebody said, I smell a circular pattern. Yep, <laughs> you, are, you guys are ahead of me here. Um, we need six of these. So I'm going to come in here and say create pattern, circular pattern. Okay, now by default, this is usually set to faces. And I could come in here and select all those faces. But I much, much rather change this to features and say I want a pattern that extrude and I want to pattern that draft angle also. So I'm going to select both of those in my timeline because those are the features. What's the axis? I just have to click on a circular edge and let's tell it to do six of these guys. So I'm going to say OK and it patterned the extrude and the draft all at the same time pretty quick. Okay, um, the last thing I need to do is you'll notice that these pieces actually like indent in. So there's like a little recess in here. 
and then this little edge here kind of slips underneath it. So that's what we're going to be creating next. And I thought the easiest way of doing this is, I mean, there's multiple ways. I could create a revolve with a profile and revolve it around. But check this out. Here's a neat little tip. I'm going to create an offset plane from that face. And I know that it needs to go in minus 0.2, okay? And so you can see that that plane is now inside that body. Then I can come in here and say split face, not split body, because that would actually remove the whole ring off of it, right? I'm going to say split face. We'll click on that face. What's the splitting tool? It's going to be that plane. And I'm going to say OK, and notice what it did. Let me turn off the construction. You'll notice that line doesn't exist on the outside. It only exists on the inside, because we only split that face. Then if I come in here and I say either press pull or offset, I can say offset this face. And watch what happens. I'm pushing that face in. And let's go the correct distance. In this case, um, minus 0.02. We just created that recess in there. In fact, if I uh, turn on the analysis again real quick, you can kind of see that. Let me go to the front. There's that recess. Now, I notice when I get really close, I get kind of these jagged lines because this is a long curve. So if you see that, it's just the number of faces or number of lines representing that for you. OK, so I could have done a revolve. But that would have had me create a, another sketch. I'd have to draw a rectangle. I'd have to dimension it, all that kind of stuff, which it would work. But in this case, I was able to offset 0.2 and then offset that face, um, the correct distance, 0 0.02. So hopefully you found that useful. OK, actually, according to the drawing, that was the last thing. So what I'm going to do now is change the appearance of it. So I'm going to hit A for appearance. And I showed this in my last live stream. We're going to be using the same material over and over again. So I added it to my favorites. So if I click on favorites, you can see this blue plastic. So I'm just going to drag that on there. And if we zoom up, you'll notice it's got that whoops, bumpy texture and stuff like that. And it's the correct color. So let's go ahead and save that. Say OK. And pretty much in about you know 20 minutes, we created this part. Okay, so I'm going to continue on with the, the back part. Uh, we won't have time to do the middle part today, but let's, uh, let's see how far we get with this. Okay, so we worked on the front, right? We made it into its own component. We're going to do the exact same thing with the back. I'm going to right click and say Create Components from Bodies. And we now have this back component. In fact, I can fold up the front. We don't really need to see it anymore. And I can even turn that guy off. Okay. So this is kind of that skeleton shape. It's the basic shape of the part. But obviously, we need to come in and we need to add a lot more information in here. So we're going to be creating all these little ribs. And we're even going to do the decals on the back and those recessed holes and all that kind of stuff. So. That's what we're going to be doing next. OK. So created the component. We activated the component. Now I want to basically create those screw bosses. So let's click on this front face here and create a sketch. And everything I'm doing here is in that outline. So if you want to rewatch this video later on and follow in the outline, um, hopefully that'll make sense to you. Let me jump to here. So I'm going to be creating um, these screw bosses and these ribs. So, and you'll notice I even labeled things like mirror lines. We're going to mirror some things later on. Um, obviously, we're going to create one of them and mirror it over here. We're going to then mirror both of these down to here. But you'll notice that it's not centered, so that's why there's this little offset mirror line. So again, I'm just using this drawing to create my design. So I'm just going to start out by kind of mocking things up. I'm just going to draw three circles. 
I don't care about what size they are right now. Okay, just something like that. Then I'll come in and add some dimensions. So I'll start with this guy and it's supposed to be 0.3. The next one is uh, 0.45. And then this last one is um, 0.7. Again, according to the drawing. Okay, so those are the circles that I want. And then I need them to be located a certain distance from center. So I'll go ahead and place that there. And that's 1.05 and you'll see it moves it over. And then it needs to be a certain distance up. Okay, so I'll come in here and say it needs to be 0.7. And notice it's fully constrained now. It's constrained to that center point. Everything is dimensioned and everything looks good. Now I'm going to do something interesting here. Um, let me go back to the case. And if we look in here, in fact, let me just make, um, let's just do the back. I'm just going to isolate this guy real quick. You'll notice that there's these support ribs and they're kind of stuck farther back in there. I'm actually going to create where these ribs are right now. And then we're going to come back and use that information later because they have to do with this particular feature and we're going to be mirroring this feature. I'm going to add that geometry in right now. Okay. So I'm just going to, again, I don't care about the dimension or anything like that. I just want to get these lines and you'll notice I'm kind of hovering over doing something like this. You'll notice that they are not constrained, which means I could move them around, right? I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to come in here and say, I want that line to be coincident with that point. And you'll see it turned black. If I said I want that point to be coincident with that point, it would bring that point all the way down. I don't want that. I just want these to be lined up with each other. And now you'll notice that they're black. Okay. And again, this will make more sense later on. But what I just did there is I kind of created the geometry for one of these standoffs. Now I want to continue that. Okay. I want to mirror it over here. But to do that, I have to have a mirror line. And I don't have a mirror line right now. So I have to create one. And I typically do my mirror lines as construction geometry because I don't want them to be an actual object line or that would affect my profile. Okay. Um, and then let's go ahead and mirror this over. So under create mirror, I'm just going to draw a box around my geometry. I don't want to go crazy. I don't want to get all this stuff. I just basically want to get that geometry there. Then I'll say, what's my mirror line? That's my mirror line. And you'll see it's going to mirror over to the other side. And you'll see my little rib lines that we're going to use later on are in the correct location. Okay, now I want to mirror down. And again, I showed this in the drawing. We're going to basically create a line that's 0.875 down from the center of these circles and mirror it across that line. So to do that, I need to create a line. And again, I have my construction checked, so I'll click here. I'm going to point down and type in 0.875. Okay. So it created a construction line down, and then all I have to do is create a line over, like so. And now I have that line that's in the correct location. I'll say mirror. I'll draw a box around the stuff I want to mirror. What's my mirror line? I'll click on that line there, and we can see that we mirrored it down to the bottom pretty quickly. Now, some of you might be saying, well, Brad, I've watched some of the other live streams and you always say, keep your sketches simple, draw one of them, and then use like the mirror command um, using features. And I could absolutely do that. But because this is a really kind of a weird curved surface and stuff like that, 
I'm actually spending more time with my sketch and basically saying here's the four screw holes and I want them to go against this curved surface. So again, there's no right or wrong way. Um, but in this case, I'm actually creating a more complex sketch. That way, if I ever needed to change, you know, the distances or whatever, I could come back to this sketch. Okay. So now what we're going to do is I can either say finish sketch. I, I've shown this before. If I say finish sketch, it gets me out. Or I can actually click on my profiles. So I'm going to go ahead and grab these profiles. Then I can right mouse click. Now you'll notice it says extrude and it says extrude. Be careful. The, the tan or the orange, whatever color you want, that's extrude a surface. So it would basically create a thin paper tube basically. Whereas the blue one is extrude an object. Okay, like a profile. So I'm gonna say extrude start to drag and you'll notice it kicked me out of my sketch and it brought me into 3d automatically so it just saves a little bit of mouse movement instead of having to say finish sketch and then come in and do an extrude okay now these are the holes so i want these to go all the way through so i could just drag and you'll see it cuts through like so but i want to be more precise Okay, so I'm going to come in here and say go through all. Okay, now why would I say go through all? The reason for that is if I were to come back and change the shape of this curve in my skeleton model, for example, I always want these holes to go through all of it, no matter what shape that is. If I had only said, you know, extrude an inch and a half or whatever, and we really kind of change the shape of this, it might not go through all of it. So sometimes it makes sense to do this extent all. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and say, okay, my sketch turned off, but again, I just unfold these guys like so, and I can turn my sketch back on. There we go. Okay. Then I'm going to extrude these larger circles. And here, uh, pay attention to what I'm doing here because I was trying to think of what's the easiest and fastest way of doing this. And I could have created multiple sketches and offset planes and stuff like that, but we're gonna use one command to do all of this stuff. It's pretty cool. So I'm gonna select these four larger circles and say extrude. I'm going to start to drag to tell it which direction I want it to go. Now, how far do I need it to go? Well, this is a weird curved surface in here. So I'm going to say, instead of distance, I'm going to say to object. And then I can click on that curved surface. Now you'll notice I get an error that says tool body failed. And now you're like, well, what a great demo, right? The reason for that is this option right here, chain faces, and it's kind of hard to see with the icon because it's highlighted, but it actually shows kind of like a curved surface and it's only going to the front of it. This one, it looks like it's gonna grow to follow that curve. So watch what happens when I click on that guy. Now you can see the other icon better. So by doing this option, what we're saying is, um, to extrude to that surface no matter what the shape is and change you know follow the curvature and everything and you can kind of see that's what it's doing okay however these are too tall they need to start way down inside the model so this is where i would have had to create an offset plane and another sketch and all that kind of stuff but check this out instead of starting at the profile plane we're going to say offset plane and we're going to offset into the part 1.7 inches and look what it's doing. It's kind of hard to see because the sketch is sort of in the way in that blue face. But what we said is use this profile, but start 1.7 inches into the model 
before you start extruding. Pretty cool. And we obviously want to join that together, so I'm going to say OK. I'll turn the sketch off so you can kind of see what we did there. Okay. And again, this is all in the drawing. Um, here's that 1.7. You can see there's the, the thicker standoff right there. So that's what we did. Hopefully you're find, finding this useful. Okay, let's do the exact same thing, this time with these middle circles. I'm going to go ahead and select those. I'll say extrude. Tell it to start going that direction. OK, now I'm going to do the exact same thing. Instead of a distance, I'm going to say to object. I'm going to click on this inside face. And you'll notice it says tool body creation failed. Well, we got that last time. So I'm going to click on chain faces. But you'll notice I get the exact same error. And you're like, whoa, what's going on here? Well, the reason for that is because this profile is actually inside here. You'll notice the face I selected doesn't intersect in there. I know that's a lot of information, but if you ever get something like this and you're like, why does this not work? Try something else. So instead of the inside face, I'm going to select the outside face and notice if I change that from cut to join, that actually works because it was able to snap to a face. And it really doesn't matter that I selected the outside versus the inside in this, in this example. Now these standoffs need to be where they're at, so I'm going to go ahead and say OK. We'll turn off the sketch real quick. And we've created those four standoffs. And just like before, I want to add some draft to these. But I'm going to have to do the draft as two separate steps. OK? Um, you know, I want to draft this to be one degree, and I want this also to be one degree. So I'll come in here and say draft. What's the plane? I'll go ahead and select that plane there. What's the faces? And I can actually grab all four faces at the same time. And it remembered my last angle of one degree. So you'll notice when I hold down my control key, you can actually see the preview. So there's zero degrees of draft. And then there's one degree of draft. I'll say OK. I'll repeat my draft command. But this time, my plane is going to be here. What's the faces? I'll have to rotate a little bit so you can kind of make sure we're grabbing the, uh, the faces here. It's doing an auto save. There we go. I'll uh, click those small faces there. It remembers one degree. Kind of hard to see, but if I hold down my control key, you can kind of see the, the preview changing ever so slightly. And now those standoffs have one degree of draft. OK. <clears throat> so now what I want to do is I want to create these rib features because we're still kind of working on these little standoffs but you'll notice they're indented inside the part a little bit in fact according to the drawing they're one inch into um, the design well m those lines are on this sketch so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create an offset plane we'll drag it in minus one you can kind of see the nice preview. It kind of shows what that looks like. And then I'm going to create a sketch on that plane. So you'll see that that plane kind of cuts through one inch into the design. What I'll do now is I'll project. I'm going to use those existing pieces of geometry. So it's kind of hard to see. But notice when I hover over this line, it's actually projecting it back to here. So you'll see it projected that line there. I'm just going to quickly go through and grab these lines off the first sketch and project them onto that second sketch. I'll go ahead and say finish. And let's turn off that first sketch. And now you'll see that those lines are actually farther back in the model. So instead of having to recreate, 
And remember what I did. The reason I did it this way is I only had to draw two lines and then we mirrored that and then we mirrored it again. So instead of having to draw a whole bunch of lines, I was able to reuse them and just use the project command. Okay. Okay. I really like the web command. So I'm going to say web. What's the curve? I'm going to go ahead and click on that curve and look how powerful that is. Even though this line's really short, because we have extend curves turned on, it's going to grow and extend to the next surface automatically. So literally, I just click on these lines and you'll see how fast we're going to create these ribs or these webs, I should say. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on all of these real quick, like so. And instantly we have those webs and they're all different. Um, that's why it was so neat to be able to just mirror everything. Um, it already had the thickness in there. I mean, I could make this, you know, 0 0.02 and they would be thicker um, or thinner, I should say. I'm sorry. So, but they are 0 0.04. I'll say OK. And we now have those ribs or those webs, I should say, in there. I keep calling them ribs, but the, we call them webs. Okay. Hopefully we're doing okay. Um, and you guys are learning stuff. I'm going to go ahead and change the appearance since people like the, uh, the blue. I'm going to go ahead and drag that on there. So we're starting to see what our part looks like. So the next thing I want to do is work on this little arm right here that's going to attach to that pivot that we created last last time okay so again using some information from this drawing I'm going to create that okay um, let's see where we're at here I'm just looking at my outline making sure we're doing everything okay um, Oh, okay, so now what I want to do um, is actually, I, I told you I was going to create the arm. I actually want to work on the back of this. I like to kind of keep everything organized. So we worked on all of these little standoffs. The next thing I want to do is kind of finish what the standoffs look like on the back of this part. And you'll see that here. So you can see these little indentations and stuff like that. So that's what we're going to do next. So what I'm going to do is I don't have a flat face back here to create a sketch on. So I'm going to use an offset plane and I'm going to drag it back. Now I could just kind of guess, but I like to go, let's just go maybe we're almost at three and a half. So let's just go minus three and a half. And I just created a construction plane that's exactly three and a half from that front face. Okay. We'll sketch on this face. And I'm about to show you a neat tip. So I want to project these four circles. So I'm going to come under here and say project. Now if I click on the edge of the circle and say OK, you'll notice it did project that, but I don't see a center point. OK, I'm going to undo. I'm going to project again, but this time instead of selecting an edge, I'm going to select the circular face and say OK. And this time I see a center point. So here's my little tip. I like to project the geometry as much as I can. So this is an edge. I would say this is geometry. This is a face, right? So the reason it probably didn't do a center point is because it's approximating this weird shape that's on a curve. And sure enough, it turns out to be a circle. But by projecting the face, it knows that that's an exact circular face. So there's the exact center of that face. So again, just a neat little tip. I like to project the geometry instead of edges, if possible. Okay, thumbs up if you like that one, hopefully. Um, okay, so I projected these circles. Now I'm going to go ahead and, again, just mock things up. I'm just going to draw a couple quick circles here. I don't care what size yet. 
Then I'll come in and say I want that circle to be exactly 0.5 in diameter. And then I can come in and say I want these to be equal. So I want that circle and that circle to be equal. And I can just click on these real quick. So instead of having to type in 0.5 every single time and dimension every single circle, I just did one and made them all equal. Okay, here comes the fun part. So now I want to extrude these in. So I'm gonna select just the bottom circles first and say extrude, okay? Now, here's where it gets interesting. I, I need to go a very specific distance and I'm not sure what that specific distance is, but according to the drawing, I give you the distance from this face right here. So, just like before, I'm gonna say start, but I'm gonna say from object, and I'm gonna click on that flat face, okay? So it's gonna start there, but then I wanna offset the correct distance, which in this case is uh, 1.85. So, you'll notice the preview now. So what did we do? The sketch is right here. Okay, that's where the sketch is. I told it, go from this face, come forward an inch, 1.85 inches, and then start your extrude. And how far? It really doesn't matter in this case. Okay. Because I didn't have a flat face in here somewhere to say, okay, put my sketch there and extrude it out. I'm having to reference actual geometry. And again, this is in the drawing. Here's, here's that 1.85. It's kind of hard to see, but it points to that indentation right there. And then the next one we're gonna do is 2.4. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing. We'll turn on our sketch. I'll select these guys, say extrude. And again, play with this. You, you, you kind of have to see it happen to understand what's going on. So instead of it starting here and extruding, I'm saying start from this object right here, this face, okay? And then offset um, 2.4. So you can kind of see it's now offsetting 2.4 and then it's extruding some distance. And again, I just have to go far enough and you can see how tight that curve is. So we'll go ahead and say, okay. And we've now created those recesses in there automatically. Pretty cool. Okay. Um, we're going to go a little bit over. We're almost done. Probably about another 10 or 15 minutes. Um, I noticed a lot of you didn't complain last time. Hopefully that's okay. Um, if you have to drop, I understand. Um, this will be out on YouTube. You can watch, um, re-watch it on YouTube. So all we need to do now is create that arm. So let's go ahead and create a sketch on this front face. And I'll go ahead and turn off those other sketches. Oops, that I don't need. And what I want to do is I want to grab some information. So I'm going to use that project command again, which I absolutely love, project. This time I want to grab the whole body. So I'm going to say body. I'll say okay. And you'll see that it project, projected that shape right there for me. If I had just said this face, it might not have projected that, that edge. Then I'm, I need to create a three point rectangle, a very specific distance and a very specific angle. So to do that, I'm gonna just create a line and I'm gonna click somewhere on this curve. You can see how it's snapping automatically to that curve, okay? Then I can come in and dimension that line. Now you'll notice it wants to dimension it horizontally. I want to dimension it aligned, okay? If I'm really careful, I can get near it. You can kind of see I can get the aligned, but I can also right mouse click and force it to be aligned, horizontal or vertical. So I'm gonna say aligned, and now no matter what, it's gonna stay aligned. And that needs to be a 0.75 and watch what happens, that point still follows that curve, okay? Now I can do my rectangle, 
and I'm going to do a three-point rectangle from there to there, and then the correct length, which in this case is two. Okay, so that's how I was able to create the correct size rectangle in the correct orientation. We'll use the revolve command again. So I'll say revolve. What's the profile? That's the profile. What's the axis? This edge. Now you'll notice an error here, but we're going to fix that. It's taking that profile and revolving it around that axis. And it's the correct length. So I'll go ahead and say OK. Oh, and actually I lied. Let me go, whoops, let me go back. When you do this, you want to make sure you say new body because I want to work on this part separately for a while and then we'll combine it to this body. So instead of saying join, I want to make sure it says new body, which it did. Okay. Now, you're all going, probably screaming at your computer, what about that ugly flat face? How are you going to fix that? Blah, blah, blah. Here's a cool trick. If I go under the um, modify command, replace face. This is an underused command. Watch how powerful this is. Remember, I have two separate bodies. I have this blue part, which is the back, and then I have this body too, which is the gray part. So I'm saying replace face. I want to replace that face there using this face here, and boom. When I say OK, you'll see it actually matches that shape. So instead of like dragging it up and deleting faces using like direct editing, I just use the replace face command. Really po pretty powerful. OK. OK. Um, uh, I showed this last week. I want to create a round fillet here. So I'm going to say fillet. What size? I don't know. I'm going to say measure and I'm going to click on that same edge and it's going to figure out that that's a 0.75 radius to round the whole thing over. So kind of a quick way to round the whole thing, which is pretty neat. Now I only need half of this guy, so I'm going to use my famous split body command. Here is the exact reason I want to keep this as a separate body for now. I don't want to split the blue part. So I'm going to split that guy. What's my splitting tool? We'll use the, uh, the front plane, since that slices right through the middle. And we'll say OK. And now I have three bodies. But we don't need this guy, so I'm going to say remove. And it's gone. OK, so pretty quickly I created that half arm right there. I'm going to go with a little bit of an accelerated pace since we need to kind of finish up here. I need to create a hole on here. So I'm just going to click on somewhere on the face, right mouse click, and you'll see at about 4 o'clock is that hole command. Or I could go create hole. Exact same thing, OK? So I'm going to come in here and say I'm going to say create hole. And it kind of just randomly puts it on that face. If I grab this blue large dot, you'll notice there's two dots in the blue. This one is the center of the circle. This one is the center of the whole face. So obviously I want this guy right here. I want it to be 0.2 in diameter. And I just want it to go all the way through, doesn't matter. So I'll say OK. And we just quickly created a hole. I could have done a sketch. I could have created a circle. I could have dimensioned the circle. Could have hit extrude cut. I just find this to be so much faster. And it's a feature in my timeline that I can come back and edit. OK, I want to shell this guy out. So just like before, click on a face, right mouse click. It shows me the commands that make sense. And one of them is shell. I can start to drag to kind of get a preview of what that's going to look like. It needs to be a 0.1 thick. But I notice that it's also shelling it right up here. And I don't want that. So I'm going to hold down my control key. And I want to select that curved face. But it's kind of buried. So I'm going to click and hold. 
and I can probe through. So there's that curved face. So if I keep going, you'll see it selects all these other faces, etc. I just want that one. And so now notice it's showing the front face and that top face of this little standoff, of this little arm. I'll say OK. And we've now shelled those guys out. Um, again, I'm just using information from the drawing, so you'll notice that there's circles that need to go around. So I'm going to continue on here. I'm going to create a sketch on that face. I'll project maybe this little, uh, let's do the entity. I'll project that guy there. Now notice this time it did put the center point because that's a perfectly flat circle. It's not on any curved surface, so that one worked. And I can just snap to that circle there and snap to that circle there. And you can kind of see we're just going to continue with that profile. Extrude. I start to drag in the correct direction. I'm going to say join. How far? I'm going to say to object and just click on that curved face. And it's going to take that profile and extrude it back to that curve, like so. Okay. Looking pretty good here. Um, okay. There are some little ribs inside there. So I'm going to do those. Again, I'm going to go pretty quick because um, it's really similar to what we did before. You'll notice there's these two lines right here. I actually want to grab those lines. So I'm going to project, um, you know, all of those features like so, and then I'm going to draw a line up here, something like that, and another line down here, something like that. Okay. I'm going to use these lines for my ribs. Well, obviously they're not the correct direction, so I'm going to say perpendicular that line and that line and now you can see it's perpendicular that line and that line they're perpendicular and then same thing with the coincident i want that line coincident with that point that line coincident with that point so i just created in the correct direction what that should look like there's also some ribs up here so i'm just going to draw a line i want that to be parallel to this line here. Oops, let me make sure I'm looking straight on. And then I can dimension that line. So I'll go from here to here. It's supposed to be 0.5. And there's another one over here. I could have drawn it, but let's just use the mirror command. So I'll say mirror, using that as my mirror line. So it's like reflecting along that line. I now have these little line segments that are going to help define those ribs okay now I accidentally made a mistake I put them on this front face and they were supposed to be farther back so what I can do is I can create an offset plane start to drag back and I think they're supposed to be um, minus 0.115 back okay then I should be able to come in here and say redefine sketch plane yeah see this is what I was afraid of I created that after that so I might actually have to oops create drag this in front so now my plane is before I created the sketch and I should be able to say redefine sketch plane and click on that offset plane and you can see I don't know if you saw it but those lines kind of jumped back a little bit and instead of being on this front face they are now back on that plane so instead of having to undo and redo and all that kind of stuff you can always come in and redefine your sketch plane I'll say that I purposely made that mistake right now so Neat way. I mean, obviously going through, I was rushing and put it on the wrong plane, but I was able to redefine that very quickly and easily. Okay, so let me turn off that construction plane. We'll create those um, webs again. 
I'll click on that, boom, it creates those webs. And I can click on all of these at the same time, okay? And there we go. Now, if I were to try and click on this guy, notice what it's gonna do. It actually fails. And you might be saying, well, why would that fail? Well, the reason why is because there's no boundary for it to go to. You can basically imagine that this part doesn't exist because they're not joined together. So before I do these two lines up here, I'm gonna to have to join or combine the parts together. So I'm gonna go ahead and accept that. Okay, cool ribs, there we go. Then I'll come in here and say combine that part and that part. We want to join them together. So watch what happens over here. We now have one single part. I'll turn that sketch back on and now if I create that web you'll see that sure enough it knows where to go to so it can actually stop at that curved surface. I just love that web command. It's, it saves so much time with complicated um, ribs and webs and stuff like that. Okay. Now you're probably saying, well what about all those teeth and all that kind of stuff? Well. We're gonna go a little bit longer on this, I apologize, but we're doing okay. What I want to do is um, finish up with this little indent thing here and then we'll create those little teeth. I need to recess a nut on here, but again, I don't have a flat plane. So I'm gonna say construct and I'm gonna say tangent plane because this is a curved surface. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that and said, um, basically, I want it at zero degrees, okay? Um, so Angelo just sent me a message saying, what about drafting these ribs? So it's the exact same thing, and I won't spend too much time here, but if I say draft, and I click on that face there, and then I say I want to draft that face and that face, you'll see I can actually you know, add draft to those faces. You know? and, and I apologize, I'm not doing that on every single thing here. I'm not an injection mold specialist or whatever. I know you have to have draft on all of these faces to make them come out of the injection mold. Um, but I was showing you, you can add draft and here's how you do it. You guys will have to take it to the next level and do it on all of the features. Otherwise it would take way too much time. So a yeah, great question, thanks for asking that. Okay, um, so I created a, uh, let me turn on my construction plane. So we created the construction plane that was tangent to that curved surface. Um, let me expand this guy open, turn off the old one, turn off that old sketch. So it's basically just sitting right there. So now I can create a sketch on that face. I'll go ahead and project, and because it's curved, I'm gonna go ahead and project that face there. And you can see it created that center point for me. And then I'm gonna use the polygon, circumscribe polygon command. What this allows me to do is it's gonna basically create the shape of a nut for me automatically. And I know in this case, the radius is what it's asking for is 0.17. And I'm just gonna go ahead and say, okay, you'll notice that the nut is kind of rotated and I don't I don't think that looks all that great so I'm gonna come in here and say perpendicular I want this line to be perpendicular and you'll notice as I hover around it's actually finding you know lines from the ribs for example so I can go ahead and click on that and you can see how it rotated that nut shape to be perpendicular with that other line then I just have to select this guy extrude Again, using the information from the drawing, we extrude it in um, minus 0.65. It actually goes pretty far into the part. I'll say OK. And there you can see, sure enough, you can even see where it goes inside there also. Pretty cool. So use the tangent um, command for that. So, OK. Now, here's where we're gonna join this to the other part. Now, I could draw the tooth, 
and pattern it like we did last time, but why not reuse something we've already created? So I'm gonna expand, open my data panel, and here's that stake pivot that we created last, last uh, live stream. I'm gonna say insert into current design. In fact, even before that, I'm gonna go ahead and save just so I have, we've done a lot of stuff, so now I've saved. So I'm gonna go ahead and now insert into current design and watch what happens. It's actually gonna bring this model in. Now it's rotated the wrong direction, so I'm gonna rotate 90 degrees. Okay, kind of snap to 90 degrees. And then I like to sort of get it kind of close to where it needs to be. It doesn't have to be exact. And then I'm gonna use point to point. I'll grab that point there, that edge is gonna actually line up with that edge there and you can see that it positioned the part right where it needs to be. I'll say okay. And then we're gonna use the combine command. What's the target? That's the target. What's the tool? This is the tool. And instead of joining them together, I want to cut. So we're gonna use the information, the teeth from this red part, and it's gonna basically in, engrave, embed, whatever term you wanna use into the blue part. I'm gonna go ahead and say okay. And if we turn this guy off, we instantly have teeth. Okay, now I could have recreated the pattern, that's totally fine, but I just wanted to show how you can use existing geometry to help with your design. Okay, now I don't need this anymore, so I'm going to right click, but you'll notice that I don't see remove in here. And that's because this is a linked component. You can see that by that little chain link right there. So I'm going to break the link. And now when I right click on stake pivot, I can say remove. So I removed it out of there. Pretty fast, okay? Okay, so we're pretty much done with that arm. The last thing is there is a cool um, plug that plugs into the back. It's kind of hard to see here that I downloaded off of uh, GrabCAD. And so we're gonna bring that in, but you also notice it's recessed a little bit. So we're gonna do that real fast. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna use maybe this same plane right here. So I'm gonna create a sketch on that face. I'll draw a circle somewhere here that is um, 0.875 in diameter line that up with the uh, vertical point right there so it's lined up vertically and then I need to dimension it and you'll notice I don't have a point that I can dimension to so I'm going to have to project that circle and now I have a point so I'll say from here to here and again this is where it gets kind of hard so I'm gonna right mouse click and say I want this to be a vertical dimension and I want that to be um, 0.1 down. And there you can kind of see how that updated. Okay. I'll click on that profile. I'll say extrude. Now this is gonna be kind of weird. I actually need to add some material to the inside of this part here. So I'm actually gonna drag into the part a little bit. And instead of cutting, I'm gonna say join. And I want to um, basically offset this to be like, I'm sorry, I want it to go, let's see, to the height of the short standoff. I knew, there we go. I'm gonna click on that short standoff there. This is why I create notes, so I knew the exact distance. Um, so you can see in this case, it's 0.15. So we use that circle. We're adding some material in here, okay? And then I'm actually gonna add even more material. So I'm gonna click on this face here, say press pull, and we're gonna add 0.1 to make that a, a much larger shape, okay? And this will make more sense here in a moment. Um, yeah, it's kinda hard to see inside the model, so I won't show it on the video. I'm going to turn on my analysis, and here's what we just did. 
okay? I had a profile and then I extruded it out a certain distance to be in line with these guys, but you'll notice it because of the curved surface, it left this weird shape here, which obviously is a big no-no. We're gonna use that powerful replace face again. What's the source face? That. What's the target face? That. And you can see how it filled that in in while I was in the section view. So now you can see this is all a big chunk of plastic right there. Okay. I'll turn our sketch back on. Grab this profile. Extrude or press pull, doesn't matter. I just need to go out this direction. Okay. And if I were to turn on the analysis again, you can kind of see here's why we did that offset. Okay because it basically extruded straight back and we would have blown a hole through it. So we extruded it straight back and then we offset it 0.1 to give it some thickness there. So that's why we did that. Okay, then I'm going to create another hole. So I'm gonna say hole because we need a place for that um, part to uh, screw into. So I'm gonna to drag to that center point there and specify it to be 0.3. Say OK. We now have, let me turn off my sketch, that indentation, we've got that extra material on the back, etc. And again, yes, I could add draft to that and all that kind of stuff, but I'm not going to in this case. So you'll notice over here I have um, this component, and I'm just going to right click and say insert into current design. So again, I, I got this off of GrabCAD. Um, I could have gotten it off of a manufacturer's web page or something like that. I'm gonna rotate it to the correct 90 degrees. Let's drag it kind of over here a little bit. And I'm gonna use that same point to point. Now what's neat about this component, it's actually a waterproof component. So this little ring right here is actually like a rubber gasket. So it's going to get compressed. So I'm going to click on that edge there and that edge there and you can see that it lines it up. Let's turn our analysis back on and we can see sure enough that fits through the 0.3 hole that we made. And then this nut will tighten down and basically compress this whole thing together which is kind of cool. So instead of having to model that we just brought it in. Okay. Okay, <laughs> we're going to go an hour and a half. I apologize. Hopefully, hopefully this is uh, beneficial. I, I run through this and I guess how much time it's going to take, but man, when you're doing it live, it never seems to go um, as smooth. Okay, the um, last thing I'm going to do here is I want to add those little tiny fillets to these edges, but like just like last time, I don't want it to do it to the teeth. So I'm going to suppress those teeth. So when I say suppress features, you'll see that those teeth go away. Okay. Um, thanks, Angelo. Angelo's like, keep going, man. Um, okay, so now I'm able to add these fillets. So I'm gonna come in here and say fillet. Let me drag this off to the side. I'm just gonna draw a box that kind of encompasses everything that I want, like so. And I'll do the point zero one fillet, and you'll see Pretty quickly, it gives me a preview of what that's gonna look like and it fills all of those edges. I just find that so, so powerful. Okay, now I'm gonna unsuppress those teeth because I didn't want those guys filleted, right? So I'm gonna come in and say unsuppress. But watch what happens when I unsuppress that. I get an error and it doesn't fill it all of those edges. And again, it has to do with like all this little geometry and all that kind of stuff. So to me, it makes more sense that I should have done the fillets before I had created these teeth. So I'm gonna drag my timeline marker before that combine, okay? I'll create my fillets. I'll do the exact same thing I just did. So I'll draw kind of a box around everything. We'll do the 0.01. 
everybody's happy, I'll say okay. Okay, then I'm gonna drag to the right and look what happened. The teeth went back in and my fillets worked. So this one here is the one that failed, so I can come in here and just delete that out of there, okay? So to solve this problem, what I ended up doing was I tried doing the fillets and I realized it didn't like it because of the combine. So I just went back in time, then I created my fillet, and then I was able to do my combine. So you might have to do this every so often, okay? Pretty, pretty powerful. Okay, I also want some small fillets on all of these edges back here, and that could take some time. So here's another neat tip. I'm gonna say fillet. Now by default, tangent chain is turned on. Now I could click on each of these individual little edges, but I could also click on a face. But notice it kind of highlights everything. I'm gonna turn off tangent chain, and now it only highlights this face. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that face and say 0 0.01 and look what it did. It's kind of hard to see, but it filleted all of the edges that are touching that face. So I only had to click once, right? And in fact, I could do the same thing. I could come in here and say, you know what, grab that face and it's going to fill it the inside and the outside edges of these flat faces. So I'm just going to go around and click those real quick. Now you'll notice it's trying to grab edges first, so I have to make sure I find some place that doesn't have an edge. And then I'll do the same thing there. I'll say okay. And we've filleted all of those edges very quickly and easily using a face instead of an edge. Okay. I'm gonna do the exact same thing for that offset. Um, for the lip to go in there. So we're gonna create a plane. We'll drag it in um, minus 0.2 Split Face not split body, but split face that inside face What's the splitting tool that guy there? I'll turn off that plane and I can either use offset or press pull and you can kind of see, I can go in here and say minus 0 0.04. Again, all of these dimensions are on the drawing, but you can kind of see how we created that indent. So we've done a lot with this model. I mean, there's a lot of geometry going on now. So pretty, pretty proud that we did all this in about an hour and a half um, for both parts. The, the last thing, and this is more for fun than anything, I included the um, decals for you so if you want to come in here and say insert decal you can actually upload them into your project so here's the logo there's a laser warning a conf uh, conforms label so for example I'm gonna click on the star shower logo what face do we want that to be on I'm gonna click on that face there and then it'll let me position and scale and rotate if I need to. So I can kind of rotate that. For example, I'll say okay. And we've just added that decal there. And we'll add the laser radiation one. Don't look into laser with remaining eye. I always like that one. Um, I like to look at it straight on. That way I'm kind of looking where it needs to be. I can position it like that. I can scale it up because this one's a fairly large um, decal. I'll say OK. And then finally one more decal that conforms decal on that face. Rotate that guy around and make him a little bit smaller and place him between these two uh, screw bosses like so. And when I say OK, now when I rotate around those decals are on that. If we rendered it, you would see those. And just like in the actual uh, model, you can kind of see there's those decals there and stuff. So I didn't do the emboss uh, the uh, button on the top, um, just FYI.
figured I'd get the major stuff here. So anyways, I apologize for going long. Um, I hope you found this beneficial. Please download the outline and the drawings um, that are in the description of the video and try and create this. Um, you know, throw it out into the Facebook group if you uh, finish it and you're proud of it and stuff like that. I love seeing those comments. Um, thank you, Angelo, for helping out. I do go and review all the comments, so I'll try and answer those. Um, I really like uh, other people saying, hey, you, should, you could try doing it this way, you could try doing it that way. Uh, for example, uh, Blaze Banks, I know he watches a lot of these and he has some really good feedback. So definitely um, come back every so often and read the comments in these videos and you'll learn something, um, not just from me, but from the whole community. So with that, have a wonderful rest of your day and we'll see you next week. Thank you.